Well, I'll tell Listen, you the story. So I bought supposedly this a is where we're at right now of super reds and for 125 bucks. We got Corey. Yeah. Mail just died. We got Jonathan. We got Mark and Jeremy and over here. And we're just hanging out today. We're going to see a ton of fish room, so it's going to be a really cool day. And I, Super excited. And uh, here's a sneak peek of what's to come. Paid 40 bucks for the extra female, too. So. Yeah. Dude, what's the key until you point the camera at me? <laughs> so we're now entering the man cave. Walk down the steps. You got an African cichlid tank. Every t he said every type of Africans um, cichlid you can find. A lot of different types. It's, it's his wife's tank. It's all about keeping keeping the color in there. He's got like a stainless steel tank over here. It's about a hundred gallons. Long in home aquarium, but uh, I used to run a rescue. Right, right. So at any rate, he's got looks like a fifty gallon bow front, something like that. Maybe forty gallon. Hard telling. He's got a. I think this was a two forty. Beautiful. He said this was South American tank, maybe. He's got the the TV. Got to have the man TV. And this is a twelve hundred gallon tank. You got toast right here. Tired and old. Huge. And we got her in PA. I traded an entire spawn of tilapia for. Um, and on the ride home, I said, okay, well, this is a big commitment. She's going to live for a long, long time. What, uh, what should we name her or name it? And we got all these names like Nemo and, you know, Fang and stuff like that. My youngest son, who was five at the time, all the way from the back of the suburban said, well, I think we should name it Toast. And everybody started laughing. Oh. It's all right, buddy. Why Toast? He says, well, because everything she lives with is going to be toast. <laughs> you know, Five-year-old kid knows more about fish than... Oh, she yeah. three feet, probably? She's just under three foot now. It's hard to gauge through the glass, but when you pull her out, it's or over the top of the tank, she's just, she's massive. Yeah. There's Jonathan himself. I just bought the tank. What's up? Jonathan, thanks for letting us come and hang out, man. Anytime. Anytime, really. How long did it take you to... Uh, to build a 1,200-gallon tank, because didn't you do an addition? Uh, well, isn't it? it started out. It's <laughs> it started out as an 800-gallon tank. That wall on this side used to go all the way across. Oh. Uh, and then we turned it into a 1,500-gallon tank, blew out the back, and went down. So there was a point where it was. Oh, it was a foot. drop off. There was a drop off on the That's back. That's kind of called cool. it the deep end. Um, and. It couldn't handle the five foot pressure. Five foot uh, deep pressure. It lasted about six months. Started leaking a lot. Oh, yeah, every seam busted in the back. Ooh. Um, then I just filled it in and went straight across and it's been fine ever since. Sort of. Actually, do a talk uh, memoirs of a wow. 1200 gallon tank. Yeah. And uh, it's basically an hour roast on myself. <laughs> All the things you shouldn't do. You shouldn't do. Yeah. So. How about this? Can we see the filtration of it? Uh, sure. Well, it's up to you. Sure. It's, not, uh, it's a dirty room or something. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Hey, it's nothing know. exciting or complicated. There, no. the, we're looking at the filtration for the 1,200 gallon tank. So what do we got going on back here? Jonathan? Okay, so to explain it rather simply. Okay. Water comes in through here. There's four places it comes from. Okay. Goes up. This is a siphon break and then goes that way. If you put your camera in there, you can see that that water level is the same as the water level that's in the tank itself. Gotcha, so it can never overflow. Right, so then it goes around and it comes into these tubs which have five inch port foam in them, about here. Okay. And then um, they're filled with bio balls below that, which oh, okay. it's looking like they need to be rinsed. Really? So underneath, it's five inch foam, right? and then you probably have a good six inches at least of bio balls. Yes, and then there are four inch holes drilled on the bottom of those tubs Okay. with egg crate that keep bio balls in, and then everything, all the water drops down into this big box, which is about 180 gallons. Oh, this is actually that uh, That's full of water. Yeah. 
so I don't know if you can see the water in there or not. No, I, I can see it in person, but not on video. Hard on video. And then wow. in there, there's a sump pump, and it pumps the water back to the tank. Back to the tank. So it's, it's a pretty simple, <laughs> very simple the layout. Now, I'm a big fan of the fish bag. Yeah, you got to keep it simple. I love the fish guy. You got some admirers around here. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's my wife. She's the only one. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. So how much evaporation do you get, would you say? Um, if I shut the exhaust fan off, if you look in there, nobody wants to see me. Oh, I got See you. the exhaust fan that's tied in through the glass block? Yeah. If I shut that off, condensation will build on the ceiling. Mm. But with all the glass that's on there and everything, it's it, it not, helps. It's you, the walls are dropped. Yeah. So and that's his hidden feeding hole right there. Yeah. Here, hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> we need a shot from both sides. There it is. <laughs> Ooh, they can already tell. She they, knows. Yeah, they know. She heard or something. She knows. They, they know. Dad turned the lights out. Dad turned the lights out. Well, that's a cup of extreme. That was a cup of extreme. And this is some sort of commercial half-floating, half-sinking pellet for like aggressive catfish. Ah, like an Aquamax or something. Something, who knows. Easy. The arrows like to jump. Mm -hmm. And then this is Tetra Cichlid Sticks. This Ooh. is for all the top feeders. Sorry. <laughs> Would they splash everywhere? Oh yeah, there's food flying out. <laughs> they tend to get a little excited. You'd think they'd never get fed. What was this skinny catfish? It is a Sorbomichthys planiceps. A firewood cat. Sorry. Yeah. Got a little excited. So that will do about once every three days because Toast will eat the lion's share of the food. Oh, will she really? Yeah. She just mows it down. And if you want to try and get a close up, there's a pile of rocks right here. There will be fry, cichlid fry, darting in and out to try and get something. Oh, to eat. you got a common pleco in there. Oh, yeah. Used to have a pretty rare pleco in there, but toast ate it. Jeez. Oh, toast. Yeah, she ate it backwards. <laughs> so you leave the exhaust fan running all the time then? 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. It's been going for 10 years. It was a $30 fan from Home Depot. Worth its weight in gold. I'm afraid to shut it off. <laughs> I would be too. It would never start back up. <laughs> right. Power goes out, you're in trouble. That's awesome. And it, 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 the power has gone out, but... Um, yeah, it's a very simple filter design. Actually, in the sump tank is 100 feet of PEX coiled up, and that's how we keep the tank heated. Oh, you're just running hot so water through it. There's a there's a thermostat hanging on the wall in the corner of that little gray box. Yep, got it right there. Yeah, now that runs a Grunfoss pump. So, right here, this is tapped into a hot water line. Yep. Goes right into the sump tank, coils up 100 feet, and then comes back. But when it comes back, it comes over to here, into the service room. Down to this, here's the Grunfoss pump, and it pumps it back into the bottom of the water heater. Oh, so it's constantly going through the water right. heater to keep it warm. It's a closed system. Geo did that. Yeah, it's a closed system. So it's not like I share fish tank water 
with the hot water in my house. It's radiant heat. Yeah. That's all it is. Here's the big fish room, right? There's the tank. So he's got like the display man cave room. And then you walk in and that's where the big fish room is. So, see, I'm a seven guy. Crayfish? Yeah. No, I don't. Not much of a. No, not really. I'm a cichlid guy, so. Me too. Yeah. Um, what do you think, Marcus? I'm loving it. I'm loving it. This, this is even another 125 gallon. This might even be bigger. 150 maybe. It's around 150. It looks like it's two foot deep. Yeah. It's like the art. for a fish house in the back yeah uh, where I want to do kind of like a river system it's one of those situations where it's not what you know it's who you know and I know where I can get glass for mm. cheap those two panes of glass cost me a hundred bucks uh, I want to do like a u-shaped river in a probably 30 by 40 building just around the whole edge but have it split so it comes around this way and they go back around this way, but have viewing from both sides of it. Oh, that would be cool. So it's the, it's it's going to be straight, and I'm a carpenter, so I'm going to build it. I'm not going to do it out of concrete. I'm not. I'm going to build it out of wood. You know, I have the capabilities to seal it. So, uh, and it'll probably be shallow. It'll probably only be three foot, top to bottom. Yeah. And we'll try to throw stuff in there and see if it survives. Huh? But she deserves something bigger. Oh yeah. You and know. you'd love to see her get double that size. Yeah, oh, she will in there. That gets 600 gallons changed over every week. Oh, automatically. So yeah. Yeah. So there's water. I don't know if you can see. You see in the back, yeah. back right hand corner. Oh yeah. Running. There's fresh water running in there constantly. There she is. Yeah, she's. She's so, destroyed. Guys, I'm here with Jonathan. We just saw the 1,200 gallon tank. And Jonathan, I ask everyone, what is one piece of advice that you could give everyone that's watching? If you're keeping fish, be patient. Be patient. This hobby is about patience. If you see a species that you want, but you can't afford it, or you don't have room for it in your fish room, just wait. It'll come back around again. If you have a species that you really want to spawn and you can't figure it out, put it on the back burner, eventually you'll figure it out and eventually they will spawn. And then your next mm. issue will be how to get them to stop spawning. Yeah. So this, it's it's about patience. You know, take your time, learn, read, yeah. talk to professional, talk to, to, well, not professionals, but experts, if you will. Yeah. And, and learn as much as you can. Do your research first. Be patient, that's be awesome. Be patient. Do your research, buy the tank, then the fish. That's awesome. Well, Jonathan, thank you so much for letting us come out and see it. You're welcome. It's been, it's been, it's been awesome. <laughs>